this week, you know, let's just be honest, this month, it's good to be back, 3A NFT, all about affordable NFTs. Uh, we're going to be covering, frankly, a lot of news that happened in the period that we were off, and then kind of getting into speculation on how low will it go, things that have been affecting the overall NFT floor market, and I think that'll uh, that'll shake out. How's it going, Andrew? Yeah, going well. Yeah, there's been been a lot happening. And, you know, you'd think that a $38 million mint uh, would be a bullish sign for the NFT market. But man, it's been it's been ugly out there. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? What is this $38 million? Well, that's the, mint? That's the, uh, the elementals uh, from Azuki. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into this a bit. Um, so anything uh, you've been active at all? Anything new in your wallet? Probably not. We've been off a bit. So probably uh, pro- anything. Well, let you answer anything anything going on there i'm actually i'm just sort of waiting i don't want to miss the uh when we get into like that paint drop uh that might be coming in in august that i don't know if anything new has come out about it though yeah i haven't heard anything new there that's right that's the uh the paint drop uh or from fuocious the uh the PFP collection coming there so that is uh, scheduled for august um yeah, well, why don't we get into our, our news here? You know, as uh, alluded to earlier, there was a big, big uh, project minting. And this was the, so this is a, the second collection from the uh, Azuki um, creators, a follow-on collection. This was, this minted out to uh, to holders, to pre-existing Azuki holders. Um, and let's see, they raised 38 million in that sale. Oh man, it did not go well. the The reveal here uh, was a big disappointment. The elementals they look very, very similar to the original Azuki's, making it pretty difficult to tell the difference between the two without looking at the collection or you know, the contract info. Um, so this has been this has been pretty detrimental to both the price of both the elementals and the Azuki. Uh, the original Azuki collection, I believe the floor has gone from about 17 ETH. Um, and uh, let's see, it looks like we're down, down to... to seven and seven and dropping, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, and then that happened in a, in a hurry. So I think these minted out, let's say, I believe they were, uh, yeah, let's see, they sold out in 15 minutes. I think they were two ETH. Yes, they were two ETH a piece. Um, and do you happen to have that for up there, the elementals? Let's see, I'm seeing a uh, floor price there of 1.25, so well under the, the mid price, although uh, it has rebounded a bit from where it was uh, earlier. It had gone well a bit under 1 ETH. Um, so it's really been, you know, I, th- I think it started as a very bullish sign seeing 38 million. You saw that there were people here ready to go. And, you know, this sort of turned things around in the negative sense, I think. And it's been uh, been really ugly for for NFT collections across the board. Yeah, but this is the biggest drop we see. So if you are looking at, you know, spoiler Absolutely. alert, our NFT yeah. floor drop, like this drop 60% in 30 days. Um, you know, it, it's leading the charge. If you look at the top 10, you know, kind of sized by uh, major projects. And that is a, it, it feels like during a, the bull market, right? When you had one of these like bad drops, it really didn't kill the main project as much. But I think, you know, if, you know, you were riding on the, the, hype, the hype cycle of a new drop, and you miss the mark and you disappoint users, I, you're, you're paying a more dear price now. And so there's like almost this like incredible risk when maybe you're holding a major project uh, like Azuki or other other projects that, you know, promise an upcoming drop. And eh, it, yeah. Uh, would you pick up one of yeah, these? Yeah, and Azuki's uh, really... If it uh, drops, would you shop one of those or no? You don't think that's a play? No, no, I'm, I'm staying away from these, you know. I mean, I... I... <laughs> I, no, no, I can't touch this collection right now. I don't know enough about what's going on at this point, and it's not good from from where I do sit. Yeah, yeah, fair. Um, I do know somebody who was like got in Azuki fairly high, and it, it was just pain. It, it was just <laughs> pain all the way down. Yeah, and it's really been one of the the bigger success stories of PFPs. You know, of the the non yeah. um, board ape 
universe uh, PFPs, um, you know, so it is, it's disappointing to see. And I mean, the, the collections really are incredibly similar. So, um, you know, there is a, let's see, the elementals holders, I think they're, they're trying to demand a refund or, you know, I think there's a couple different parties that are, you know, that are threatening lawsuits here. I believe the, uh, they've said that they are going to update the artwork, you know, at, the, at this point, um, you know, I don't think that that will, will save the project, but, you know, I think there's, it's not the end of it. You know, we'll see what happens, uh, you know, down the road here. I'm All right, moving on. What, what, hold on. What is the hack? Go ahead. Here? Like the Azuki hack? Like, is that a real thing? There are like NFT holders who are like demanding a refund now, but I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, so they there was a flaw in the Zuki Dao contract that stole thirty five ETH. It looks like uh, they had so they had overwhelmingly voted to hire a lawyer and sue the pseudonymous uh, Azuki founder Zagabond and to demand that Shiru Labs refund its thirty eight million. <laughs> Um, so then there was a flaw in the, the Dow contract that, you know, presumably was collecting money to, uh, to hire the lawyer. So not a good situation there. No, it's, um, you know, I, I think there's the, the normal frustration, but you know, 35 ETAC is not very good in your contract layer. Oh, I was just wondering if it was something bigger than that, but yeah, it seems like a, let's, here's a reason for us to be frustrated and come, come after you for a, a drop that didn't moon immediately. Um, I don't know how much sympathy I have for somebody arguing that a JPEG dropped to them uh, <laughs> that promised social value didn't meet your expectation. Yeah, yeah well. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, disappointing that, I, you know, I think that if that had gone right, it really could have, um, you know, sparked a lot more interest in the, the NFT market. And, you know, instead it was another, <laughs> another uh, drop gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. We're used to that, though. All right, what else we got? Yeah. All right, so Autograph, the NFT, not NFT startup, I guess we should be saying now. Uh, this one's co-founded by Tom Brady, where you can uh, collect uh, uh, items from, from famous athletes. Um, they are shifting their focus. They are no longer a NFT company. They're removing crypto language and trying to do more on... Uh, honoring uh, relationships between uh, athletes and uh, fans. So, you know, interesting, um, you know, we've seen that Reddit uh, has called them, uh, I believe, digital collectibles. And we're seeing that the NFT name really does not have a, a good connotation. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of companies use the technology without necessarily saying NFT and, you know, seems to be having more success. They seem to be having more success in that way, you know, to be determined if, if autograph will uh, have success. Uh, Dior, the, the fashion label is another uh, company that has recently, uh, let's see, this is they're entering NFTs, but won't uh, say NFT. So I don't know the, the specific term that they're using here. Let's see, uh, digital twins uh, to the, the physical uh, good. So, you know, it is interesting. We're seeing these, um, see companies get into this without getting into NFTs without actually saying NFT. But doesn't that make sense? Like, I feel like this is the, the new technology adoption cycle. Like we are a website. Mm -hmm. We are a company. <laughs> right. Right. We you do don't have website. to put .com in your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, we're moving out of the, the two thousands into like, no, we, we get it. You don't have to say www dot right like you don't have to say it's an nft right, like right. no 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 like, and i i think that's smart i mean look they went through 170 million dollar fundraising round so yikes uh you know tough tough pivot there when you call yourself a you know nft celebrity but i'd say changing more to the core of the mission of deepening the relationship between uh celebrities and fans like that makes sense by the way digital collectibles nfts blockchain whatever right what are you trying to do? And it better not be make NFTs, <laughs> make website, yeah. we make website. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> we make website <laughs> with celebrity, celebrity website. That is what you know, like we're mature, like maturing, but 
you know, I, no, the Tom Brady stuff is all over. Um, my mother-in-law was telling me about Tom Brady's woes. I was like, what? So it's like the type of news that gets out there is like, oh, you know, Tom Brady lost all his money in NFTs and uh, FTX crash is um, the top level. But, you know, it's not going under. He's pivoting. <laughs> so here's a now I'm actually I was actually just checking the these political NFTs, we've talked a little bit about this and about the Trump NFT specifically. Um, so this is, you know, saying how has the, the Trump 2004 campaign already started, you know, using, looking at these political NFTs, you know, and, and looking at these, they actually do call them digital Trump cards, digital trading cards. They're not NFTs here. I've noticed as well. Um, not real surprising, you know, when you are seeing that that is, yeah, it's a much more natural way, you know, people aren't collecting, aren't collecting these for the sake of them being NFTs, you know, presumably they're doing it for other reasons. And I think that's a great way to, to look at these. Um, George, you've talked a little bit about political, about campaign or fundraising through, uh, with NFTs. I mean, what do you think of this here? Yeah, I, this is a brilliant backdoor. I gotta be honest. If you are, um, if you're an elected official and you're like going to be in the game for a while, there's the pros and cons of this are, are pretty clear. I think, though, the fact that anytime you want people sort of rallying to give you money in any manner of way, uh, the fact that just trading an action on those 10%, I believe the royalty fee goes to um, goes to Trump, right? And it's also a sort of a proxy for his uh, popularity, right? What is your floor? Pr it's a reputation element. Right now, I will note that... <laughs> If if I were that type of person, uh, the floor price has dropped 70%. Um, there was a huge drop um, in mid-April, April 17th. But the, the floor price is now 0.12 down from previously. It was like hovering around 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Uh, so look, I'm not saying I'm going to do it. I won't. But if you want to bet on something, I would say him pushing that popularity um, – might be worth taking a look at it if you are a true degenerate, because I believe when the political campaign cycle begins to rise, uh, his supporters will look at that floor price as a proxy for popularity. And, you know, there's 44,000 of them. There's quite a, quite a good number of them out there in the market. If I were them, I'd probably do another drop um, to do a shameless cash grab, but you know, any reasonable strategy would have some relationship to the original Trump cards. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Actually, I'm pretty surprised to see that drop. And I don't quite understand why I, I think there have been some liquidations. And to see a drop like that, it means like something um, odd happened in a liquidation format. You know, somebody was levered up and had to had to dump. And uh, there's just not enough buyers in the market to support usually that price. Yeah, yeah, I think that we, you know, I think we should keep an eye on this. I think that we will see more and more uh, politicians using these, using NFTs or not NFTs, <laughs> not um, NFTs. for fundraising. <laughs> yeah, Onis. <laughs> yeah, come on now, Onis <laughs> right. okay, There you thank go. Thank you. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> So the generative art platform FX Hash has has now uh, expanded to Ethereum. Uh, this is a this was previously only on um, uh, on the Tezos uh, ecosystem or in the Tezos ecosystem. So this is a pretty big move. This isn't a Tezos isn't a layer two. This is a much bigger uh, shift here to a new chain to the EVM, uh, the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, you know, so bigger change here, but I think this is you know pretty significant. FX Hash has, um, I mean, they have, I would guess thousands, if not, I mean, certainly hundreds of projects on there. I'm, I'm thinking thousands. Um, and have been sort of a, um, I mean, uh, in a way, uh, I mean, a more experimental uh, generative art platform than what Art Blocks has offered. And they've, had some really successful artists come through with some that have gone on to produce uh, art block projects. Um, so I think that this is cool that they are expanding to Ethereum. Um, you know, I'm not sure 
you know, I'm not sure what they are thinking about the future of the Tezos, uh, the Tezos platform or the Tezos chain there, or, you know, but I think this is cool that they will, uh, they will be accessible on the, the Ethereum uh, network. I mean, we, t- we really did talk about this, the platform hopping that would happen. And, you know, that was actually the big basis of mm. our, uh, you know, our bet at the time. And frankly, I, I still stand behind it of shopping underpriced Tezos artists who are by all means quite popular on platforms like Artblocks. And the fact that you can now move this over to the Ethereum network for whatever that's worth, um, I, I think adds uh, adds value to that, assuming the entire market doesn't, you know, sort of go, <laughs> go to zero, which I don't believe it will. Um, so I think this is a bull case for Tezos uh, value shopping, actually. Have you bridged? Speaking would of you bridge? Art, Actually, hold on. Here's a question that? for you. Would you bridge something? Like, I don't know why I would, but I'd Ooh. like that I could. Actually, you know why I would? Because I get a little nervous because I don't go on my Tezos wallet that often <laughs> that I would do something yeah. dumb. <laughs> and I maybe just like, I'd rather just have it under my banner, right? Like, so my banner of like mostly stable.eth, right? Like that's whatever my, where I want to show off my stuff for, you know, as marketplaces get better or my social profile gets hooked to that. The fact that it's like orphaned over on my Tezos, like X two, three, four, five, eight, nine, two, like that's not where and how I can show it off. So maybe that would be a reason. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the idea of basically having them all in one or accessible in one wallet um, and not necessarily on multiple chains. Um, yeah. I, I do see the, the benefit there, you know, uh, although it is, you know, it, it's funny, we, we sort of look at that as okay coming to the Ethereum ecosystem, not as okay when it's going out of the Ethereum ecosystem. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe nice. a little bit uh, biased on our <laughs> part. <laughs> if it's not clear already, we're Ethereum axes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> well, want to be maxi necessarily, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, I, I guess there's a... No, no, that's important. Like, betting on versus, like... This is the solution to all things in the world. I think we yeah, are shy of that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, Chappella are. did not fix the uh, conflict in Ukraine, right? <laughs> we thought it would. It did not. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Another contract upgrade should do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right. So speaking of gen art, we've got Sotheby's launching their own... Uh, <sighs> Let's see, blockchain fueled program for generative artists. Blockchain fueled. Hear that? Um, so you know, I think this is just kind of showing the the uh, the. I mean, gen art has been around for a long time, but it really has taken off with with NFTs and with um, with crypto in general. It's really it's really impressive how gen art has continued to to garner interest. Um, you know, we recently talked about the Dimitri Cherniak, uh, uh, the goose piece that sold for. 5.8 or a little over six with the fees, um, 6 million. So, you know, some pretty uh, impressive prices. And uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 interesting to see that there's still more happening in this gen art space. Um, Sotheby's certainly has uh, paid attention to this. You know, when they're selling these, they see that maybe they could uh, have their own in-house program, I'm, see, I'm sure. And uh, that's what they're launching here. Um, it's so it's a program for artists to develop these. So it's not not necessarily a platform like Art Blocks, not a competitor. I would say but no. They're they, using uh, Art Blocks. It says it's on the right, uh, right, right. built yeah, sorry. on Art Blocks <laughs> engine. So like it's just a huge nod for frankly Art Blocks. Yeah, yeah, Art Blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, the you know I think I'm a little bit bearish on the generative art simply because like with platforms like hugging face like you could just spin up a model within two clicks of a mouse and generate as many images as you'd like it really has lost a lot of the art element i think in that it is proliferated you're still going with generative in a different way not the code base generating the piece from the code right that's what i think we're talking about here yeah, maybe I should separate it out a bit more. But what I'm talking about, is yeah, like I mean, it is tough because we're generate, using generative like... so much. Maybe we need gen. It's, it's tough because we're using generative so much in in AI now, and I think it, it's it's a 
maybe giving the wrong name for what generative art generally is in the generally is in the um, in the NFT space being being the code creates the you know a specific code algorithm creates this these outputs it can be you know it, there's a range of potential outputs some are going to be you know rarer than others um, but I think that maybe it's not always clear and maybe it's not always <laughs> being used the same way in the articles that are, <laughs> you know, that we're even looking at for this, uh, yeah. these news uh, pieces. Yeah. I guess I'm, uh, I'm more and more wary of uh, one. I think if you're an original artist that has established themselves, like I respect that you started using this code, but if you're just sort of, you know, frankly, anybody rolling out of bed and now you're able to click a few buttons, I'll just be honest and create a, generative image or a generative art collection based on code that creates, you know, based on some seed that you put in there, a bunch of images, uh, yeah. you know, the easier that gets the, the less unique, at least I find the, the overall piece, but there's always new, fascinating, creative, uh, ways, groundbreaking ways of, uh, building on that. But if you're using the same tool, look, if everyone uses Canva to like design something, you like eventually it just sort of looks pretty darn similar. Like I can identify a Canva image now pretty darn quickly. Here's my template and I clicked it together. Here's my, you know, whatever C generated uh, piece. And like, I think we're, we're getting to that point. So I'm a little nervous about new, uh, new artists and projects on that using that code, but we'll see. All right, we've got, uh, let's see, Beeple piece has just entered a museum. This is the first uh, piece from Beeple to uh, to be collected by a museum. So it's quite a risque piece, um, you know, not even risque for, for Beeple. So some images that look like Sam Bakeman freed in, um, I don't know, go take a look <laughs> oh, in the FTX <laughs> office. But... <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not going to try to describe this, but you've heard the stories about what was going on there. It's, it's off of those. All right, go take a look at it. Um, but it is cool to see, you know, not, I'm actually kind of surprised that there is not a, there was not already a, a cool, uh, piece in a museum just based on how, um, how much he has, uh, how, how, uh, how the notoriety he has again, and the, the uh, um, just interest that he has um, brought to the space. <laughs> go take a look <laughs> i'm sorry this is uh yeah go take a look um he's having him i'll say this he's having his way with himself and seems to be enjoying it does seem to be enjoying it Do you think, <laughs> it seems like it's also art created by someone who may have lost money in all of that but <laughs> yeah maybe that's there's that's some spice some... Not out of question. And let's see. I've got one more, one more here. One more article. This is one of the Robbie Barrett nudes. This was one of the early pieces on uh, the Super Rare platform. This just sold for three hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars. Let's see, one hundred seventy-five ETH. So yeah. This is, let's see, this is frame number 111, portrait number seven. So these were given out at a um, auction in, let's see, at the Christie's auction in 2018, summer of 2018. Uh, many people did not keep them at all. So these were some of the earliest AI generated uh, NFTs. Um, I think they are the credit as the first AI generated NFTs. Um, so they have been um, some of the, fetch some of the most premium prices in the, especially on the super rare collection outside of X copy and uh, still happening right now. So definitely an impressive price to see in this bear market here, 175 ETH. Um, I, let's see the last one, I believe uh, at least the, some of these, let's see. Yeah. Some of these have sold for as much as a million. Um, you know, so a, a, a good price, you know, considering that those were low, but this is still a very, uh, healthy price in a bear market. Now there are people that really just don't appreciate the art here. They don't think that it's a good example of AI art. They don't 
maybe think it's art um, at all. Even the artist has um, uh, has kind of come out somewhat critical of the or very critical of the prices that these have fetched, thinking that they are absurd. He hasn't uh, produced any new pieces on his uh, super rare account since those. So, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that the, the artist doesn't even <laughs> appreciate that they are going for that much. And there are definitely uh, some, some critics out there as well. So I'm confused when you're, we're talking about like what was, you know, the AI generated or not just AI, but you know, these generated pieces, I thought that autoglyphs was, had provenance as one of the first generative, generative, not AI. Correct. Generative, not AI. Gen but, art. But this is AI. AI. Yeah. This is Gen like. Art. This is, yeah, AI art. You know, I mean, that's what it's at least. I, I don't know a whole, I don't know a lot about the story behind the, the production of these pieces or where they came from. Um, but I, I don't know. I know more about the pieces themselves than the, the production of them or, you know, the inspiration behind the pieces. Yeah. Gotcha. So generative versus AI. I mean, look, when you look at tools like Dolly to like, they're generating some odd 2 million images a day. <laughs> um, that, I mean, they're just churning these things out via like API calls that now like on demand. So, you know, I guess the provenance matters, right? You know, first or early uh, does hold sway. Uh, but I've been burned on definitely that type of thinking for like, everything is a first for something. If you get like weird enough, I feel like it's like baseball stats. This is the first player to hit a double while chewing gum in the third inning in the, <laughs> in the green Mountains. Right, right. You're like, <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, all right. So look, our, our theme is, is pretty straightforward. We've also like been dancing around it and talking about how low can it go for NFT floor price. Uh, but there's been a, you know, precipitous drop recently. Overall, I think, you know, it is attributable to uh, different prices being hit, but the NFT leveraging going on um, on margin causes these sudden swings uh, where you flood the market with a bunch of sales because things have to be liquidated. And when that happens, there's, you know, only a certain amount of buyers uh, at certain price points. So that price continues to drop until you find a buyer. An NFT floor price is not an NFT floor price. <laughs> it's the lowest amount that the current seller has listed. The real floor price is below that. And I don't know, call it what, 10 to 20% sometimes below that based on the delta between the WEF bid and the the actual yeah, floor right. list. So if you suddenly right. chew up all of that, your floor is actually a lot softer than that because once the, let's say, 10 bids are accepted, move down the ladder, you begin to drop pretty darn quickly. Now, yes, they can rebound, but that's, I think the story here of why in um i'll just switch it to 30 uh 30 days and if you can go to like uh nft price or wherever you like to go uh, but you know things like board apes dropped 24 percent 32 percent on mutant apes uh which you know was the i think that was the levered position that suddenly uh got liquidated um of course crummy squiggles not moving down because it knows i i wanted to buy one so those things are <laughs> Only down three percent, which is uh, a nothing, a nothing burger. Um, but down, I mean, we talked about Azuki dropping um, by sixty percent. Uh, other side, other deed for other side drop thirty five percent. So, you know, big hits in that top ten, which you know just sways uh, sways the overall market. Um, I'm impressed actually to see the sandbox. Um, still yeah, absolutely. out this, there at 0. 0.3. Which wow. one? <laughs> the sandbox is at 0.35. They're only down 10%, but I'm really impressed that that's, that's still out there. And Decentraland holding at 0.5 ETH. Um, not bad. Mebit. Yeah, it's certainly been ugly out there. I think, you know, when we're talking about, yeah, where are they at? Mebits are at 1.2. If that drops below one, would you get back in the, you, you had a bunch of Mebits, I know, back in the day. Have you liquidated all your Mebits? <laughs> yes, I found a good, I don't have any Mebits anymore. I had a, I found a good 
good loophole there. Get some of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, you, that was pretty clever. Uh, you have a yeah. one point two. Yeah. I don't know. And if <laughs> NFTX was a help there. <laughs> Yeah, claiming it's, it's worked in others too, but I think most people are onto this. When you can claim things, you can use things like those pools to swap in and out and, and go claim. Um, yeah, I don't know how interesting it is going down, but it's just a surprise. Like, you know, Moonbirds continues to drop, they're at 1.8. I've said if like I get interested in Moonbirds at one ETH, uh, me bits, you know. It's tough to, to catch a falling knife on, on those. Um, you know, V Friends also down. Classically, a, a product a project that was up pretty pretty darn high. You know, he's got one year left on the conference there. Um, but what you're seeing is the art, though. Um, you know, art projects like Chromie, as I mentioned, is not really moving. Autoglyphs is frankly up, but doesn't have enough action to really be fair about that. Fidenza, um, I know you. Obviously, I had that Fidenza back uh, a little way back, but you know that's this is not moving. It, the price is really strong over the 30 days and holding. Um, so it's really the you know that PFP collection just taking taking a hit because there's just not enough new folks coming in chasing new projects. So that's I think why we get more excited about brands and companies coming in. You know there are folks flipping flipping Starbucks uh, Odyssey stuff pretty well right now. I think. Uh, what do you think? We hit the the floor of the floor, or do we still have more to go? You know, it's it's tough to say. You know, I think there's, you know, for a long time we've said that that uh, most of these projects are going to go to zero, and you know, we may be seeing that in action right now. Many projects that you know you thought might be safe and might be making it through, you know, they're 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 struggling now. Um, you know, there's you know, it's been a lot of blame on being pointed. On, uh, or being placed on the, the NFT marketplaces. If you look at crypto Twitter, um, if, you know, they're, whether it's blur, um, with the lending incentives or, or um, and, you know, any, or even open I mean, they, they really, you know, there's a, I think there's a good point made. Um, let's see, this is this one. I've seen it a couple of times, but this one in particular is zero cool ETH. Um, just talking about the fact that the NFT marketplaces need, you really, it's not about how many listings you really want to have the the floor you want to have the lowest price that's where people are going to go to buy you know and that's they know that um you know that that's what it takes so having lower prices is is sort of you know it's it's sort of in the nft marketplaces uh, benefit and you know i think that we are seeing this especially when there's multiple uh new listings coming on and you know we, we know what happens when when uh, you know, when things are running hot, you know, there's the, the FOMO really keeps the momentum going and, and the price moving up. And it's just the opposite right now. We're just seeing it everywhere. And, you know, I think that, well, well, I'd like to say that it's over, you know, I, I don't think it is, you know, I think that we're really going to start, we're going to see, we're going to see some corrections on some of these collections. Um, some of these will be much better than they are right now, but I think that we're still, we're still, uh, looking at more downside for, for many PFP collections that just don't mm, maybe, I mean, don't have, that aren't engaging their, their holders enough to, to entice them not to list and, and not to, you know, or not to list or not to get loans on. And, you know, and then we've got the, the same problem that, uh, that we discussed earlier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I do think there's, you know, It'll be fun when the market does come back. I do firmly believe it'll be back, but um, not in the near term. I'm checking on my moon cats though. I haven't I haven't checked it. Here's my bet. <laughs> it's 0.3 because it doesn't move. Maybe 0.25. Let's see what my moon cats are. cut out there what was the what was the one thing <laughs> i'm trying to get the moon cat price it's slowly loading come on moon cats oh 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 but it's dropped oh no it's at 0.19 it is it's fallen off its mark <laughs> of 0.3 i don't know it might be time for more moon cats moon, moon cats uh-oh <laughs> 
I would love I jump in. I haven't bought an NFT in a while. You know what? I'm feeling like a moon cat. Uh, alrighty. Uh, that was everything I wanted to cover. Good speculation on floor price. Uh, we'll see you out there. Good luck. All right. See you out there.